Ezekiel chapter 34. This is where God is speaking through the prophet. And he is rebuking the shepherds because the shepherds have have become so self-centered, self-adulated, that they have forgotten the good and the protection of the sheep. They've quit looking for the protection of the sheep and the welfare of the sheep, and they've started looking to their own devices, their own interests. They were like the sons of Eli, who were supposed to be priests, but they were committing adultery and fornication with women when they came into to the temple. They, they would literally steal the meat that was already apportioned to them They had no feeling for the sheep that God had placed under them and God rebuked them to Eli and he said, I've rejected your sons, but I'm raising up a prophet and he will be a man with a heart for God and he will lead the people of Israel. Can you say amen to that? Even Samuel's sons who should have followed in the footsteps of their father, they turned to their own ways. And rather than looking out for the sheep of Israel, they looked to their own desires and their own devices to indulge themselves and to celebrate themselves at the people's expense. Very much like America today. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Do you hear that? Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and you clothe you yourself with the wool. You kill them that be fed, but you feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened. Neither have ye healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled them. Does that sound like the shepherds in America today? Who pile money, prestige, celebrity, houses, land. There's nothing wrong with being blessed. But there comes a time, folks, when we lose sight of what God has called the shepherds in America to do, we are to be the voice of God to this nation that is backsliding and turning its back on God. They were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the... Scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains... And upon every high hill, yea, my flock was scattered upon all Therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Listen carefully. He's speaking not only to the shepherds of ancient Israel, but he is speaking to the shepherds. In America and in the West and in countries that many of you come from, just like America, shepherds are being raised up, idealized, elevated, and growing and drawing more attention to themselves, piling money, prestige, and celebrity while the sheep suffer. Those who are broken, you haven't healed. 
Those that have been scattered, you have not found and you have not gone after. And God is saying, there is coming to this nation, there is coming a great judgment upon America if their shepherds, if the priests, if the men and women of God do not turn their hearts back to God and the pulpits are not consecrated to the Holy One of Israel. We're not here to elevate ourselves. The shepherds are not here to make sure that we're well, well fed and the sheep go without. The sheep are hurting, they're scattered, they're broken. God says, all you care about are your own interests. Listen to me. The heart of a shepherd cares for his sheep with his whole heart. Can you say amen to that? The true shepherd has a vision for his sheep. For he cares for them, not simply collectively, but individually. In Ezekiel 34, God chastises the prodigal shepherds, for putting their own needs first. The failure of the nations of Israel and Judah began with the spiritual shepherds who began to care for only themselves and rather than demonstrate the heart of the shepherds like David and Moses and Abraham, the shepherds began to indulge themselves like the sons of Eli and Samuel. They had no feel for the plight of the sheep They only cared about themselves. Read Psalm 73. Does a wonderful job describing how the psalmist, who wasn't David, but one of the psalmists who was writing, he said, I almost slipped when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. My feet almost slipped from beneath me when I looked at how the wicked prosper." And the righteous fall and the righteous face all kinds of evil and wickedness. I almost fell. God today is looking for men and women who will fill the pulpits, who will speak the truth to power. Do you hear what I'm saying? Who are not afraid to speak truth to power. Look at at David in the 23rd Psalm, how he led the sheep through the dark and foreboding valley of the shadow of death. And where was Moses when God called him from the burning bush? Was he in the palace in Egypt? Was it the regal halls of Pharaoh? No, it was in the wilderness keeping watch over his father-in-law's sheep. You want to be a man of God or a true woman of God? Then keep the sheep that God has given to you, that God has placed you over. Take care of those sheep and spiritually lead them to Christ because Christ will never fail them. God even told them they'd turn their homes into a temple to burn incense on their roofs to Baal. And their children were made to walk through the hellish valley of Hinnom where they burned their children to the God Molech which God never told them to do. So he turned them over to the Chaldeans and he made them to serve and worship Nebuchadnezzar. Listen folks, America can say how great we are We can rest in our missiles and we can rest in our defense. We can rest in our economy and we can say that things just don't get any better. But we better pay attention because there's often a facade before judgment comes. The people, they fill themselves with self-satisfaction and they say like the Laodiceans, We are fine, fixed, and in need of nothing. But the Lord says you don't realize that you're neither hot nor cold, but you're lukewarm. And because of that, I will spew you out of my mouth. Their arrogance. 
their proud look, their self-adulation to be like other nations provoke God to give them over to their enemies. And America is following a very dangerous path. We're, we've allowed, just like ancient Israel, to bring in foreign gods and strange deities and to deny the one true God that gave this nation its birth. Church, don't believe the lies we are being told today. It's revisionist history. They're going back and they're denying the truth of how this nation was born and how God birthed it. It was birthed on Judeo-Christian values and the word of God. And when they got off of their ships, they knelt down at Plymouth Rock and they gave thanksgiving unto God for giving them a new nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need to go back to that place of repentance. Yes. We need to go back to the place of the altar. Yes. Just like Elijah, when he challenged the gods on Mount Carmel after the false prophets, the false priests, they built themselves an altar. They began to cut themselves and gyrate speaking incantations and dancing and cutting themselves and bleeding and crying out. They cried out until the afternoon, but nothing happened. We may not have as gross and as macabre an event as that in the pulpits of America, but the same effect is The clouds are like iron. When they do pray, their prayers are not from the heart. The prayers are not like Ezekiel and the dry bones. They're not like Abraham who made a covenant with God and he fought for that covenant. We have tried in America, in our churches, to emulate the world rather than the world trying to emulate the church. We brought more people who don't even know who Christ is and place them on platforms to entertain crowds and to bring in the latest gizmo and gadgets so that people can be entertained and impressed. But the power of God is not there. Did you hear what I said? I say, God, raise us a generation, a Joel generation of prophets and priests who are not afraid to stand and speak the truth no matter what happens. Listen to this. The other day I, I was watching on YouTube And there was a woman in her full Muslim garb speaking to her constituents. I don't know if she was a teacher or a politician, but she said these words and I sat and listened to the rest of it. She said, let's quit trying to hide our intention and our goals. We are going to make America a Muslim nation. And the sooner we quit trying to hide it, we will conquer She said, we will bring our laws to this nation and follow the principles of the Quran. We will not deny ourselves. We will make America a nation based upon the Quran. We will be successful by taking over the schools and the government and leadership and we make no apologies for it. And the people have been lulled to sleep. You say, well, we just need to understand them better. Oh, really? I'll tell you how you can go and understand them better. Why don't you drive your car over to their mosque and walk and get out of your car and just walk around the front for about 10 minutes and see how quickly they kick you out of their premises. They don't want to be understood. They want to take over. 
And I'm not just speaking to one, about one deity. You see all kinds of deities. From worshiping Baha'u'llah to worshiping Baal it, with, a, with a new frill to it. But it's the same thing ancient Israel went through. But I've got news for the devilish minions and their lackeys. We still have a God who hears the prayers and intercessions of his own people that if we pray, that if we repent and pray and seek his face, there's not a God or a demon that can match our Lord God and his promises. Hallelujah. Our mantra should be 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Let me read it for you. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Hallelujah. That is a promise to the people of God. God is raising up true prophets and priests and shepherds who will lead our nation back to God through revival. Listen carefully. I have watched very carefully many of these candidates who are running for president. And as I said on Wednesday evening, one of the leading Candidates in the Democrat Party, they had him speaking on the radio back in the 70s. And what he espoused was this. He said, we should not be so caught up and be fearful of sexuality. He said, in fact, what we should do is we should allow children, when they come to school age, to be able to take their clothes off, male and female, and explore the sexuality of the of one another and not be so caught up with trying to cover sexuality so they can choose themselves what sexuality or what sex they want to be. Let me tell you something, folks. We need to stand and speak out. Did you hear what I said? We don't need to act like we're fearful. We have nothing to be afraid of because our God is a consuming fire and he will lift his people up. We're going to call America back to repentance. We're going to call the people of God to pray and see a revival like we saw at the turn of the 20th century. Yeah. 